Hi, I'm Matt Van Acker. I have the honor of serving as the director of the Michigan State Capitol Tour Education and Information Service. And it's my pleasure to welcome you to this beautiful new facility that's just uh, opened a few months ago. Uh, we're standing on the far extreme of the Capitol in the north end off of Ottawa Street. And our entry into our new Heritage Hall Welcome Center is just behind me. Um, this new facility we're so excited about will be able to help us host the over 100,000 guests that we have annually that come on our guided tours of the building. We also have an incredible uh, conservation space, a beautiful exhibit space, uh, archival storage space for some of the incredible artifacts that we have uh, pertaining to the Capitol. Really great exhibit space and uh, two wonderful state rooms and some very large uh, restrooms, which is huge for all of our uh, oh, uh, school children that come in to see us. Um, we're really excited to share this wonderful new facility with the visitors to the Capitol and the people of the state of Michigan. We hope you come in to see us soon. This is my new favorite space of Heritage Hall, our conservation laboratory. In this space, we can work on our Civil War battle flags, on um, historic artifacts, and portraits um, from the Capitol here. So during the Civil War, Michigan sent about 90,000 soldiers to fight for the northern states. That was over half of everyone in our entire state that was allowed to go and fight at the time. When our soldiers went off to fight, they formed regiments, which were groups of about 1,000 soldiers, and each regiment was given a flag. That was how they talked to each other on the battlefield. In each regiment, there was one person called the flag bearer, and if that regiment was going to attack the enemy, the commander tells the guy carrying the flag, we're going to attack over there. The flag bearer would take off running, and everyone else would follow him. Both sides realized very quickly the easiest way to win a battle is to confuse everyone, and the easiest way to do that, you kill the person carrying the flag. So being a flag bearer was incredibly dangerous. Now, when the war was done, our soldiers who survived the war, they came back to Michigan. They brought their flag back with them, and in a large celebration, July 4th of 1866, they reformed their regiments, marched through the streets of Detroit, and handed their flags over to the care of the state of Michigan. Now, our governor at the time, Governor Crapo, promised two things. He said we'd forever preserve the flag, and we'd always remember our Michigan soldiers who died fighting during the war. That time, though, we had a little bit of a problem. We were still in our second capital. It was a wooden building with gas lights, and we were very worried the building would catch on fire and the flags would burn too. And that's part of what inspired us to build our third capital just after the Civil War. Now, the flags were originally in the capital when it opened, um, but over time, they started to fall apart. In the 1960s, to celebrate the centennial of the Civil War, the state appropriated money to stabilize the flag, and a lot of them were sewed between layers of dyed netting. Um, then, in 1990, they were transferred to the Michigan Historical Museum into a climate-controlled space and kept on acid-free pallets like this. Um, since that point in time, if we've needed to do additional conservation work with our flags, we've sent them out to a company in West Virginia. Recently, a coworker and I went out to West Virginia. We did some training. And now, with this new space here, we can work on some of our flags in-house. So this here, right now, is the flag of the 21st Michigan Infantry. We're actually working on removing the net that was added in the 60s because the polyester netting isn't quite as stable as what they thought it was going to be at that point. So we're cutting each stitch individually, we'll carefully remove the net, and then evaluate the flag to see what needs to be done so we can preserve these for future generations. This is a very exciting time for us to be able to do some of our own work in-house, but in addition to doing work on our Civil War flag, this space can also be used for portrait conservation, or taking care of delicate historic artifacts as well. Another aspect of Heritage Hall that we're really excited about is our exhibit ramp. Our exhibit ramp leads visitors from the upper lobby of Heritage Hall to the lower lobby of Heritage Hall. As visitors move down the ramp, they have the chance to view large graphic panels, photo collages, and museum display cases that contain over 200 Capitol artifacts, documents, books, and photos that tell the story of the Capitol building. This first case, for instance, is called our furniture case because it was designed to hold one of our finest pieces of Capitol furniture, this original roll top desk. This case is set up to look like a departmental office from the early days of the Capitol. For this first iteration, we set it up to look like the Adjutant General's office from the 1890s. So thus we have Civil War relics, replica Civil War battle flags, and clothing worn by the Grand Army of the Republic. 
um, every summer we'll go through and refit this office to look like a different departmental space. This next case on the ramp delves into the design process of Elijah Myers, the six year construction of the Capitol, the materials used to build the building, as well as our cornerstone and opening day ceremonies. The other three cases on the exhibit ramp cover the Capitol history from its early days up to the present, even discussing our 2019 installation of our brand new geothermal system. Between each of the cases on the exhibit ramp are large photo collages that go from floor to ceiling. This last mural at the bottom of the exhibit ramp behind me shows photos of groups that have come to the Capitol, advocated, and taken photos on the front steps of the building. This is, a, this is a tradition that started on the opening day of the Capitol and continues to the present day. The far south end of the exhibit ramp holds a huge graphic panel showing different people gathered on the Capitol steps. I think this is a great reminder that the Capitol has always been a gathering place for the people of Michigan, a place where we come together to learn, to interact with our government, commemorate our history, and support the causes and interests that are important to us. In addition to being an educational facility, Heritage Hall will also host some of these types of gatherings. The central atrium area and the adjoining staterooms will host events such as legislative committees, luncheons, award ceremonies, press conferences and showcases. These kinds of events bring significant numbers of people to the building, which can pose a risk to the delicate artwork and historic fixtures of the Capitol. By moving some of these events to Heritage Hall, we're hoping to take some of the stress off of the historic structure and better support its long-term preservation. These new spaces are also designed to be practical and hospitable for our events. The north and south staterooms are divided by an accordion wall to accommodate groups of different sizes. The rooms are equipped with state-of-the-art audio-visual tech, and there's an easily accessible catering kitchen and equipment storage area behind the back wall. The wall facing the atrium is made out of acoustical glass to ensure the privacy of our guests inside. Our last stop together here in Heritage Hall will be in the south lobby. The stairs and the elevators here connect to the Capitol up above. If you were to climb these steps, you'd find yourself on the ground floor of the Capitol in the west wing. The massive state seal in the wall behind me actually used to be embedded in one of the walkways out on Capitol Square, but eventually became very badly damaged and was put into storage for many years. Now it's back out where our visitors can enjoy it, and I think it provides a nice artistic link to the Capitol up above. Uh, you will find motifs from the seal all over the building in chandeliers and door hinges and doorknobs and etched glass. So again, it provides a nice kind of connection between the new modern space and the old historic Capitol up above us. I hope you enjoyed this brief tour of Heritage Hall today, and I hope you come and see it for yourself very soon. You can find visitor information at capital.michigan.gov and follow us at MI State Capital for more fun capital content.